So let's talk about the um, first normalization rules. So the first normal normalization rules basically mean that you cannot have multiple values in one cell and you should not have empty cells. So for example, uh, if there are no value for that specific cell, uh, you can use null value, but you should not leave an empty string within that cell. So that is not recommended. You cannot have an internal structure. So for example, as an example that we saw earlier, so uh, you have multiple classes, you should not put multiple classes in one cell and also keep that uh, internal structure within that column. And you must to have a primary key. Okay, so you must to have a primary key. So here, this is a solution that for uh, the table that uh, does not violate the first normalization rules. So you can see that for, for both students, that for the first student, we create three rows and each single row will have uh, one class information. Okay, so we don't have multiple values, we don't have internal structure, we don't have empty cell, um, and also we will have a primary case. So in this case, because we have student's ID will repeat multiple times, so in this case, the primary key will be the ID column. Okay, um, so let's review what is primary key. So primary key, remember, it can be one column or it can be a combination of multiple columns and it must be unique and it also normally will be automatically indexed and for primary case, you cannot have non-values. Okay, so for primary case, you can have non-values. Uh, so in this case, the ID of the table okay will be the primary key so we can we we can always add a, a separate column that serve as a primary key so we can just add ids unique members for that table okay so then what are the problems of this current table right we will see that there are a lot of duplicate uh, redundant information Right, we have we see a lot of redundant information, especially for the students' IDs, advisors, uh, and also advisors' rooms. Okay, so those are kind of redundant information, and also we can see that uh, the class advisor and our student ID actually none of them are actually related to the primary key. So we add in primary keys just because we can distinguish each record, but the primary key is, um, is not related to any of those features. So the primary key is kind of the meaningless. Okay, so here come to our second normalization rules. So basically it means that the records should be related to the primary key okay so if you have records that are not directly or indirectly related to the primary key then you should consider split that table okay so create a separate table to set value that apply to multiple records okay um, so basically this rule will help us reduce data redundancy so uh, if that those are some, there are some values that apply to multiple records, then we sh that is normally a situation where we have redundant records, so we should consider split the table. And then once you split the table, you should also have the foreign key that you should relate uh, the, those split tables together. Okay, so here we have the solution that. Uh, uh, from the from the previous slide. So in this case, we split the class information from the student information because um, the class information is kind of uh, separate from students. So because the class exists not depending on the students. However, the advisor's information is depending on the students because once we know students, um, it is definitely they have only one advisor 
so that we will know that a corresponding advisor. But for class, so there are multiple students taking that class. So that class is not directly related to the student's case, dependent depend on the student's key. OK, uh, so in this case, the primary key on the student table will be the student ID. And on this table, the primary key will be a little bit tricky because um, none of those columns can serve as the primary key individually. OK, because you, you will see that there are always some duplicate records, right? So the solution is that we put both columns together as the primary key. OK, the solution is that we will have a combination um, key that serves as a primary key. And the foreign key individually, the student key individually, will be the foreign key. OK, the student ID individually will be the foreign key. OK, so let's uh, review what is foreign key. So the foreign key is a set of one or more columns that re which refer to primary key in another table. Uh, we can have multiple foreign keys on the one column. And the foreign keys can have non-values. And also, we can have duplicate values. OK. Uh, so again, so on the student table, student ID will be the primary key. And in this table, we can call it enroll list table because it's kind of talking about enroll information where the student ID will be the foreign key that will relate to the primary key on another table. And uh, student ID and also class ID together will serve as the primary key okay so there's only one primary key which is a combination of student id and class id okay so that is a table that will follow the second normalization rules um however someone may wondering that okay so for this student table we are talking about students information so is that really necessary that we have a divisor's room on the student table? Although it is not redundant, but that is where we have the third normalization rules. So that means that um, the content of the table that apply to more than a single table, we should put that into a separate rules. Or in in another way that if that if the content is not talking about the primary key directly, and we should put that one into a separate table. Okay, so if that column is not part the feature of the primary key, we should talk we should put that into a separate table. Okay, so here is the solution. So here we have student table. And the student ID will be the primary key. And we have the advisor table or the teacher's table. And the teacher's ID will be the primary key. And the teacher ID on student table will be the primary, will be the foreign key that is related to the primary key on the, um, on the teacher's table. OK, so that is the third normalization rule. So. Basically, if, if you have some features or columns that is not a feature of the primary key, then you should put that one into a separate table. So for example, here, the room of the faculty member or the teacher is not a feature of the student. So we put that one into a teacher's table. OK. And so that is the third normalization rule. And once you are following you are uh, following the, the third normalization rules. So that means that your tables will be fine. So the database design will be good. OK, so as long as you are following the first, the second, and also the fourth normalization rules, then 
your database design, your relational database design is considered great. OK, so you can use your tables um, uh, without any major problems. For the fourth and the fifth normalization rules, so those are, are not, not commonly considered or rarely considered in practical design. And actually, if you search online, it is even harder to find out what the fifth normalization rules is talking about. OK. So basically, all the tables must follow the first rules. So you must have a primary key. You cannot have multiple values in a single cell. You cannot have empty cells. And the second and also third normalization rules we will make sure that we don't have redundancy. We don't have redundant records in our tables. So basically means that uh, features belong to the primary key will be kept maintained in that table. The features are not related or not talking about the primary key should belong to another tables. And we should use form keys to relate those tables together. And the fourth and the fifth normalization rules are normally not used um, in practice. 